President Joe Biden ordered an investigation into the origins of coronavirus COVID-19. He gave his intelligence team 90 days in which to complete this investigation. Is such an investigation warranted at this stage? Well, I think so. After all, COVID-19 has disrupted the lives of millions across the world, sparking a pandemic that has caused almost 4 million deaths worldwide and almost half a million in the US. Certainly, this situation warrants further investigation. I am Inky Rizzolo, and it's my talk in which I give my take on issues that make the news. The name COVID-19 invokes fear in many and within reason as it is not unlike a serial killer. To me, it's like the Boston Strangler on steroids. Reportedly, this virus can trigger acute respiratory distress syndrome which can cause the body to drown itself. In this case, the victims are suffocated to death in their own blood. What a horrible way to die. Although a push for further investigation will exacerbate the already chilly relationship between the US and China, further investigation into the origins of this deadly virus is needed. Why? Because understanding the origins of this virus puts us in the position to be able to control it. Knowledge of its origins can be used to frame messages that may result in shifts in behavior that would curb the spread of the virus. Knowledge of its origin also has implications for stopping the next pandemic. And what about the theories of origin? One theory of origin of COVID-19 is that of a zoonotic spillover, which is in effect transmission of the virus from an animal to a human. The idea of transmission from animal to human is not far-fetched. For viruses like Ebola, HIV, the first SARS, came from natural sources into humans. That many infectious disease researchers agree that the most probable scenario is that the virus evolved naturally and spread from a bat either directly to a person or through an intermediate animal, according to Nature Journal, June 2021. It was therefore not difficult to believe Beijing when at the outbreak of the pandemic in late December 2019, it declared that all cases of COVID-19 virus had been infected by an unidentified animal source at the Wuhan seafood wholesale market in China. The idea of natural origins again found support when in February 2020, 27 scientists writing in the esteemed scientific journal, The Lancer, joined with Chinese scientists to denounce anything outside of a natural origins of the COVID-19 virus. The esteemed Dr. Fauci very guardedly admitted, hmm. I still believe that the most likely uh, scenario is that this was a natural occurrence, but no one knows that 100% for sure. But can this zoonotic theory be validated? The Wuhan market source theory could only be validated if similar bats were found in the area. But according to ABC News, tests on animal samples from the wet market in Wuhan turned up negative. This brings us to the lab leak theory. Is this a credible theory? And this is what we know. According to an article in Vanity Fair, Wuhan Center for Disease Control and Prevention and Wuhan Institute of Virology 
were collecting bad samples as they were conducting research on bad coronavirus. It is then quite natural to conceive of a possible spillover. It is a given that where there are experiments conducted, accidents are not far behind. Ironically, it is reported that the Wuhan Virology Lab created viruses that were more dangerous than those that appeared in nature. Their purpose was to study them in order to prevent a spillover or crossover from animal to humans in what is referred to as gain of function experiments. Could they have inadvertently allowed for that which they sought to prevent? Given this description of the lab's mission, it seems untenable that they would have deliberately leaked this virus. Not unexpectedly, the head of the Wuhan lab, Professor Dr. Shai Zengali, dismissed as misleading the idea of COVID-19 resulted from a mishap in her laboratory. But engineer and data scientist Giles de Maneuf on the Costas idea has he noted that only one of the labs in Wuhan Institute of Virology observed the highest level of protocol in which researchers wear full body suits, pressurized suits with independent oxygen. Tap. There are other seemingly damning pieces of evidence in support of the lab leak theory. Researchers at the Chinese Institute of Virology fell ill in November 2019 and were hospitalized and this happened in the initial stages of the pandemic. This seems to suggest that the Wuhan scientists, some of them at least, working on the coronavirus may have contracted the disease and spread it to the community. Well, in addition, the first patient with COVID-like symptoms was recorded in Wuhan in December 2019. These seeming coincidences hint at a possible lab leak origin. Dr. Zengali, the lab head, herself seems to have had initial misgivings for she noted her relief at finding that all staff and students in her lab had tested negative for the COVID-19. Thus, she challenged the notion that one of her staff triggered this pandemic as suggested in the lab leak theory. How on earth can I offer up evidence for something where there's no evidence? Is how she responded when pressed on the issue according to the New York Times. Then, the head of the research at the Wuhan Library similarly gave no credence to the lab leak theory. She reported that upon searching lab records going back a few years, that none of the sequences of COVID-19 virus matched those of the virus her team had sampled from bad caves. Yet, the lab leak theory seems to be the most persistent theory. Not only this, but those who subscribe to the lab leak theory are further divided into two camps, accidental or intentional leakage. One camp believes that the COVID-19 virus was human engineered from a lab in Wuhan and leaked intentionally. Among those who argue for intentional lab leak is the Chinese billionaire named Guo Wenguai who, claim, who claims that China had developed the disease as a bioweapon and purposefully unleashed it on the world. Suspicions of deliberate leak were also fueled when the former director of the CDC, Dr. Robert Redford, said he received death threats from fellow scientists after telling CNN he thought the virus likely spread from a lab, escaped from a lab. This situation made us think of a possible cover-up that there were many prominent politicians as well as scientists propagate the accidental lab leak theory. The Secretary of State reported that there was evidence that the virus came from a laboratory, but he said there was no evidence 
that it was deliberately spread. In their March 2021 report, the World Health Organization cast further doubt on the lab leak theory while noting the difficulty of getting hold of raw data. According to ABC News, the organization's chief, a lab of further data and studies were needed to reach more robust conclusions. I agree with a group of scientists who areas have added that theories of accidental release from a lab and zoonotic spillover both remain viable. However, I think that as long as the investigation of origins remain inconclusive, resulting lingering doubts for confusing speculations and conjectures, China has to come clean. Inferences are that because of the overriding governing system in place, China seems to lack the political will to be more transparent and more readily forthcoming regarding information as to the origins of COVID-19. China should, however, realize that the secrecy surrounding the investigations just baits for the curiosity. Is there a cover? Or is there an unknown source of origin? Is the source of origin another realm? as in the place of Egypt. This is Indy Rizzolo and it has been my talk. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. See you soon.